Hi, and I'm David Harry. And in this video, I'm gonna show quickly, or hopefully quickly, how to deconstruct an Acer Revo 1 RL85. Now what I'm gonna do, as the video progresses through, I'm not gonna actually show me unscrewing the screws and whatnot. I'll just point them out and you can unscrew them. It's just if I start filming the, the, the screws being unscrewed, this video is gonna take forever and like, I just ramble on and on and get dead bored, and so we'll, we'll avoid the, 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 the unscrewing process itself. But I'll just show you where all the, the screws are and like what happens after they come out and where all the bits go and whatnot. So basically, this um, this video will, will, will show you how to deconstruct the unit entirely. And the reasons why you might want to do that are for things such as inserting new hard drives, yeah, swapping out memory, or even swapping the Wi-Fi card. Okay, so what I'm now going to do is just show uh, the face of the unit. So, as you can see here, this uh, this is the front with the Acer logo on. And then, this is the side, or one of the sides, which has got the little Intel logo on. And then, this is the back. And from top to bottom, we've got two USB 2 sockets. Underneath that, we've got a gigabit LAN socket. Below that, we've got two USB 3 sockets. Let me just pan down a little bit. Or tilt down sorry now here we've got a, a full-size HDMI output as well which is which is really cool because it's full-size and not mini then we've got mini display port output as well um, uh, below the mini display port what we have here is the audio IO so that that'll cater for your headphones and your microphone next to that is the Kensington uh, uh, security lock system and then finally Actually, on the bottom on the base plate, there's three things here. This is your power input as well for the power, adap uh, power adapter that comes with the unit. This little thing here is a button which is a recess which unlocks the lid, so we can take the lid off. And then finally, here is your power button as well for switching the unit off and on. Here's a shot of the top of the unit, which is the top of the lid. And what we have here is a uh, SD card socket, uh, so for putting in and out SD cards. Also, on the top here, you can't see this because it's not plugged in, but there's a few little like, little lights that run down on the top here. And what they are, they're just indicators. Uh, one of them's for network activity, and then the other three here are for drive activity and the unit when it's actually switched on and running. The first step in actually starting to undo the unit is to remove the actual top unit. It comes off like a lid, and as you can see, that th this part here is the top of the unit. Now to get this off, what we have to do is just press the little release button in here and then that releases the clamps inside and you can pull the unit off. To be honest, this is quite possibly the most difficult part of the whole thing is actually getting the lid off. Uh, I found in practice you need three hands for doing this or put it into a clamp or something, but yeah, you know, it's a little difficult. I mean, this isn't a complaint by, by any means either because the unit itself is gorgeous looking. You know, it's got some, you know, it's nice and curved. It's, it's aesthet aesthetically, it's awesome. Um, but yeah, you know, just this, this is just a little bit of a pain, but at the same time, you know, most people are not gonna be getting access to this anyway. So I can understand, you know, it's positioning and why it does what it does. So what we'll do here then, I'll literally just jam this screwdriver in and then just prise it up a bit. Now you can feel it click at, at one point and then that's it undone. So what we're doing here, we're looking from the top down. So this is the top of the unit and this is the base of the unit. And what it is, the whole of this section here, which is basically the body of the computer, that actually is held in by four screws into the base. Now you can see the screws here, there's two on this side and two on the other side. And here's, here's the position of the screws. There's one here in this corner. Then there's also one just down here in that corner as well. Now if I turn the unit over, it's exactly the same on the other side as well. Same two, well, two different screws in the same places. So again, there's one screw on this side here, and there's the other screw on this side as, as well there. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna take these off and then I'll get into the rest of the unit. The main workings of the computer is actually in two sections, as you'll see shortly. Now, in order to get to them two sections, there's a number of screws to take out. We're actually now looking at the underside of the main section. And as you can see here, there's one screw here. And then there's one screw here. 
Now what happens is these two screws hold in what is like a gasket at the bottom, which just keeps the two halves of the unit together. So go ahead and take them two out. Now that we've taken the two screws out from underneath and, the, and taken off the gasket, we're effectively looking at the front of the computer here, or the front of the chassis. Now as you can see, there's, there's one screw here, and there's one screw here. So this is now the rear of the unit, and this is the bit where, where you've got all your sockets, and there's simply one screw here, it's just here, just right next to the two USB sockets. Now what you need to do, go ahead, unscrew that one, and make sure you've took the other, screw, the other two screws out of the other side. This is now the main unit with the three screws taken out and the four screws from the base plate. So now what we do, literally just pull it apart and it'll come out very easily as two distinct different sections like this. So these are now the two different sections that it's split into. Now this one, this side here, this is effectively just stores the main boot drive. And this side here, this effectively is the actual motherboard also in here is the fan and then inside we also have uh, the memory and also the wi-fi card so what i'll do i'll deal with each of these two independently now at this point if all you wanted to do was to replace the boot drive the only thing you'd be concerned with at this point is this side so i'll deal with this side first anyway the first steps to get at the actual hard drive is to replace this actual chassis part here, this aluminium chassis. And the way to do that is, it's only held in by four screws. So there's, there's the first screw up there. There's the second screw down here. There's a third screw here. And there's a fourth screw here. Now all four of them actually just keep this chassis in place against the hard drive plate. So go ahead, take out them screws. Now that we've taken the four screws out which hold the actual aluminium plate in, what we'll do, just simply pull the, pull the aluminium plate off and then below it, as you can see, there's a hard drive unit. Now this has actually got a different drive in than what come with it because I've already upgraded this before. And literally you just ease that out and then it's the drive the drives inside its own plate. Now with this one, all you do, you just remove the four screws, one there, one there, one there, one there on this plate. And then once you've, once you've removed the drive and, and put, put your new one in, just slot that plate back in like that. And then put that back on. And then once you're there, just put your four screws back in. And then that you completed then for actually upgrading the drive. And what you can then do is just do the reverse process to get it all back in and get it back on the base again. So here we are with the, um, the, the other half of the unit now. Now this basically has got everything else inside it. This is the inside here. And then on the other side, there's actually another, another little door system here that you can see. Now go, go ahead and just remove this door and I'll show you the reason why after you've taken it out. Because you need to do this to gain access to the cables for the Wi-Fi. Now, there's just one screw here, so go ahead and remove that screw. With the screw removed, this door actually just comes off quite easily. You'll just see like a little tiny notch here, so just kind of use your thumb or something on there. So I'll, I'll just hold it and, and basically take it off there. And there you go, it actually falls off quite easily. And as you can see, inside it, this is where the actual uh, Wi-Fi card sits. So this is a close-up of the Wi-Fi card. This is the card here, and as you can see, there's a white cable and a black cable connected to it. Now, just disconnect these two cables, the black one and the white one from the card. Now, the reason for that is, is because once we actually undo it from the other side, we would have to take these off anyway, so this is the best place to get at them and take them off. So regardless of whether or not you're gonna be changing the Wi-Fi card, undo these two cables from this point anyway. After disconnecting the cables off the Wi-Fi card, just turn the computer or this half the computer back around again so you're now looking at the inside. Now, there's three screws here. There's this screw, these silver screws. There's one here, there's one here, and there's one here. Now, them three screws actually hold the fan in place. There's absolutely no, no need to take them off. 
I would imagine that quite possibly the only time you would want to do that is if you have a damaged fan or something to do with the heatsink unit. So you don't need to take them off. The four screws that you are interested in, there's one up here in the corner, there's one over here in the opposite corner, there's also one down here in this bottom corner to the left, and then there's one here just on the right hand side at the bottom. So go ahead and take, take them four screws out. So now that you've taken them four screws out, this is what we're now left with. So this is the actual motherboard unit here. And what I tend to find is just, if you just grab a hold of the plastic outside and then ju just, just give a little yank on the part of the, this part of the board here, and the whole thing will just slide out and then just flip it over. Now just bear in mind you don't drop the, uh, the, the heat sink or the, the fan off, so just keep hold of them and just tip it over like this. Now as you can see, what we've got here is the disconnected cables. This is the reason why we disconnected it earlier. Otherwise, you'd be kind of in a bit of a pickle here trying to undo it as, as you're flipping the unit out. So at this point, let me just go in and show you what's on the board that you might want to replace. This component here, like I showed you earlier on, is the Wi-Fi card. And simply all you need to do is just unscrew this screw here and then the card will pop out. So I'll just actually, I'll show you this. I'll just, uns I'll just unscrew this now. Uh, I'll try and do it actually live. I um, just have to excuse it if it goes a bit nutty here with me hand in shot and whatnot. So, just take that screw out. Oh yeah, another little, another little tip here is try and use a magnetic screwdriver as well, because these little tiny screws can just fall all over the place. So, hold on, we're nearly there. So, took the screw out. And as you can see, it's it's got like a spring-loaded mechanism on one side, so it lifts up. So as you do here, just pop it out like that, and then simply just pop a new one back in as well, and then screw it back down. And this here is your RAM stick, and this just connects into this little slot here, or this socket here. And again, very, very simple. This doesn't need any screws to take in and out, so I'll just show you quickly how to do this. What it is, you've actually got a catch up here, and you've got a catch down here. So, literally just prise the catches open, and again, it's spring-loaded, and the, the RAM will pop itself up like that. Again, just take the RAM out, and then when you put it back in as well, or when you put your new one back in, don't worry about getting it the wrong way, wrong way round. The RAM can't actually go in any, any other way than this way, because just inside the actual slot here, there's a pin here, a guide pin. So, here we go, I'll just put this back in. And then just make sure that the, that the catches either side have caught the RAM. Actually, yeah, just be careful when you put it in. This is a good thing. I've actually not done this correctly, so watch this. I'll take it back out. When you put the RAM in, make sure you push it into the slot at the back here. And then push it down, and then the two catches will actually catch the RAM. That's the right way to do it. Okay, so here's the all the various parts of the computer in bits on the table. At this point, you just work yourself backwards through this tutorial and then put it up, just reassemble it all back together again. Or if you only actually did the actual uh, the SSD or hard drive update for the boot drive, simply just stop at that point and go backwards as well. Okay, so if you found this tutorial interesting in any way, uh, call back to the channel. We're going to be doing some more videos on small computers, this Acer, a couple of NUCs and various other things. All right, thanks very much. Take care. Bye-bye.